found is that on the rents, 29% um, of Loveland residents pay anywhere between three to $750 a month. 22% pay $1,500 on average, $1,500. That's why I was asking what you were gonna rent them for. But I think one of the things that I'm a little concerned about is that I don't, when I look at that space, first off, we have one of the station down here where we have 96 units. That to me, I understand why people would want to be in that urban, that's that urban environment where they can walk to all of the amenities. I don't really see that up on Love of Madeira Road mm -hmm. because I don't, I mean, I, it's, it's four stories. It's a lot of units, 161 units. Um, for me, I was kind of looking for that particular space to be more of a commercial kind of development where we're bringing in more you know, dollars in terms of businesses, withholding employees, things like that. Because what I've found is that with the residents, when we build um, apartments with the residents, most of those people um, commute. I mean, this is a bedroom community. Uh, and so from a tax dollar perspective, we're not really getting a lot of bang for our buck there. So that's one of my, I, I personally would kind of prefer something that was more commercial use than, than an apartment complex. So. I think I'd like to echo what Pam um, just said. Um, my concern is the location of um, the units that you're talking about, and I don't want to be repetitive, but having been in the Mullen community for almost nine years, I've been privileged to watch it grow in certain areas, but then there's certain areas where um, growth could occur, but it's being ignored. And I wanted to know if two things. Number one, have you considered um, some type of commercial attachment which would cause you to go into some other area of zoning, special use with us? Um, number one, have you considered that? And number two, have you considered another area of Loveland? Because my concerns echo Pam's. I think when you enter the city, um, Loveland is very much a bedroom community. And I personally am all about the economic development of of the town and the city, but am concerned with the location of where you're trying to place this, not the, the actual. The use, your question of location? Yes. Sure, yeah, no, I, I, I understand. No, it's a very valid question, especially the, the urban planner and me looking at, you know, how uses, um, you know, marry together, transition, et cetera. Um, I respectfully felt that this is a perfect type of location for this use for the purposes of the transition. So, you know, if you look at it down where, um, where Kroger is and, and where the um, bowling alley correct, right? Or, yes. That's, to me, I feel like that's a, a clear gateway of commercial uses. I don't think that a residential use put down in the midst of, of that strip would necessarily be a good fit. Um, Likewise, I feel up closer to the highway. I think that's a very um, specific commercial retail highway commercial feel. I think that where the subject site is, I think is a very good transition for the right intensity of use. And so the way I, I like to look at it and explain it as, as the planner, not necessarily as the developer, is the transitional use and intensity of use. And so even though um, this is on a highly traveled corridor, I wouldn't necessarily say that you could put any residential there. So I, I wouldn't put up, you know, a row of townhomes, for instance, because I don't know that that would be a good transition and intensity of use. But I think a high, high density residential, coupled with the apartments directly across the street and the condominiums, I think it's a good um, intensity of use. So I, I completely understand um, the concern on the, the type of use, but I would say with the right type of intensity, it marries well to the other type of uses. The other concern with tax base, I certainly understand that, you know, if um, from your, you know, the city is running a business as a point official, you're looking at the well being of the city. You know, it's what, you know, David, David and Eve are looking at every day to, to assist in that. So I understand that. The business of the business, and so the highest and best, you know, tax revenue that, that you could bring in from that site might necessarily be commercial. I would propose that it might not ever be that strong commercial base, or you know, a, 
a heavy revenue generator for the town. For the so in terms of the actual, <clears throat> what this facility is going to look like, um, I mean, right now, if you look at what's along that stretch of the, of the road on, on that side of the highway, it's a combination of a bunch of hodgepodge of metal buildings and, and different businesses that aren't necessarily, uh, from an architectural perspective, very attractive. Um, you know, I think this would definitely improve the look of that area. And in, since you have apartments across the street, I think that's a, it fits in the, in the you know, you're not stretching the boundaries of, of, of that area and what would be appropriate for it. Um, and it would definitely improve the look because a lot of those businesses and even the church in itself is not necessarily unattractive, but it's a metal building. It's not necessarily a very, you know, substantial structure. In terms of the tax revenues, and I don't know, you know, necessarily what the comparison would be but looking now what it's zoned for I mean you've got everything from uh, automotive service station uh, to clubs um, fast food restaurants you know there's hotels uh, in there motels things that are some are conditional some are permitted um, you know I don't know if, if those are going to create any greater tax revenue from a perspective or not I don't know that's something we'd want to look at or not but in terms of the actual establishment and, the, and fitting a, a look in the field of the area, I think it's a good, I think it's a vast improvement for what we've got now. We've had a good increase in retail in Loveland recently, and this, these would be more customers for those retail. Um, and I, development wise, this is going to be a $17 million project of real estate taxes. And while there may be lower, um, payroll taxes that may wash out in the end uh, we can't really predict that we're gonna have to kind of figure that you know make an assumption on that um, the only thing I would worry about this would be if it would not develop to like a residential area here uh, one thing I don't want to see coming into Loveland is a big box which is a great big box for 20 years and then when the lease is up it's gone and it's a great big box forever yeah, that's an empty box yeah so um, I can, I can see both both sides of this, uh, but I do feel that kind of there is um, it's it's more upscale apartment living, which quite frankly I'm looking at in a few years at age 72 I'm going to be selling the house. So um, and there's some unit, some places in town I don't want to live at that because of you know the Friday Saturday Sunday night and stuff I've heard about. Um, so I really have no objection to this. Uh, I'd have to kind of look at the pros and cons of the of the income because you know if you get a, Mc, a McDonald's they're all minimum wage and that's not really a lot of tax dollars coming in um, and I, you know I don't know is it somebody that has like an engineering firm with 20 employees making 120 thousand a year would pick this spot to to have their offices so. Um, in relation to the property taxes, um, we get less than 20 cents on the dollar in the property taxes, so it's kind of not really a part of the equation. Um, because of the municipality credit, um, and you look at the ratio in terms of people who file income tax returns and what we really get out of it, it's less than 30 percent. So, um, one other thing that I did read in the census too was that. Um, the city of Loveland actually has one of the largest proportion of renter occupied housing units around and they compared it to like Montgomery and all those areas there. And our rental um, occupancy is 21%, um, which um, according to this is actually um, high compared to, to other surrounding cities in terms of vacancy, not occupancy. occupancy. No, renter, renters in relation to owners. Oh, 21% oh, of residents. 21% are renters. Yeah. yeah. So I found that kind of interesting. That, that includes rented homes. Yeah, that's why I was going to say that's why when, I, when we were looking at the $1,500 as the average, it's because if you, if you think about it, we have a lot of transient mm -hmm. um, people who rent homes, mm -hmm. which drives up that number. Mm -hmm. 